Darling. Okay. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to just just start talking, or do you yeah, want me to just, do a just blah blah blah? No, just start talking, and then. We'll <coughs> it's been a while. Talking. I feel rusty. I know. This is the That's first the, one since oh really since the last season. Yeah, so. Well, so I'm, this <coughs> season we're not gonna start doing hi. I'm here with my little notes under here. There's so many dogs around. I know, because we're having our carpet done today, so they're all so they're here. all over here. But there's like three that live here, right? Or two. two. And then there's Summer Benny as well. Benny and Atticus right there. <laughs> Are we rolling, Batman? Do you want yes, this from Gary too? Pardon? This chair? No, that's fine. Okay, anytime, just me. So, I've never seen this backyard quite like this before. Last time was at the wedding reception. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, this whole place was transformed um, for our wedding. It was so beautiful. This is beautiful. where the wedding took place. So it's, it's like... And this is how it usually is, though, right. like this now, so. And this is your baby. This is my baby, Eloise. But when my mom walked into this backyard, she knew. Spring pain set, and um, where we were having dinner in the Smith house, and I was in a bathrobe and glasses and just kind of like sitting there <laughs> talking to people, and here, here comes the six-foot-three stud, and I'm like, hello. <laughs> and uh, we dated ever since then, now, six years ago. Was it love at first sight? Well, it was definite interest at first sight and definite, um, like, um, awakening at first sight, I guess ah. is the word. Like, it kind of, like, like everything, like, looks different after you meet somebody right. like that. And you guys have been married almost a year. Almost a year. It'll be a year October 8th. Ah, yeah. that's so cool. So I'm so excited. Year anniversary. How long do you still get to be newlyweds for? It's like two well, years? Well, I kind of say it's almost two years, but Robbie says it's the first year. Ah. So, so would you get to go on the newlywed game show? I think only I one remember, year. See, but I remember the newlywed game was a year and a half. It was like 18 months or something right. like that. So, so you guys are still eligible. Yeah, we're still eligible. <laughs> I know. I feel like a like total newlywed. I mean... And we, you know, and even we'd we've been together for so long, and after we got married and everything, I mean, it really did feel different after we got married. That's it was good. neat, yeah. Oh, it was so great. Are you guys gonna have kids? Definitely, definitely down the line, you know. Um, once both of the both both of us are, you know, <laughs> it's the dogs. <laughs> both of us are ready, and you, you know, and and can devote our time, you know. We want to enjoy each other for a little while yeah. first. But and you're so busy. Yes, and you're I'm busy now, so, so I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't have time to devote to kids too much. Yeah. I, haven't, I don't have enough time for my dogs. Aw. You have how many dogs? I have three dogs, mostly to do with my husband, because he's a dog maniac. <laughs> but I love all my dogs. Mm. But, uh, but I definitely never saw my life having three dogs. Yeah, it's a lot. A lot of it dogs. But they're little and they're cute and they're really well behaved, so it, it's cool. So I want to talk to you about um, growing pains. I, I, I want to find out, um, you were on it for nine years, Seven. Right? Seven, pardon me. That's Seven okay. years. That's a really long time. Mm -hmm. When? How old were you when you started? I was 16 when I started. I got the show when I was 15, and then by the time we started production, I was 16, and uh, uh, finished when I was 23. Wow. Yeah, so. Those are like really formative really, years. Really. You know, I say it's like having your high school yearbook, you know, in front of everybody. Right. You know, so I look back on it, and I and I watch, I'm just like, oh, I don't think there's enough distance from it yet, you right. know. I, I think there'll be a time I'll be able to watch and I'll be able to go, oh, okay, cool, you know, that's what I'm at that point now where I watch and I go, oh my God, I can't <laughs> believe I did that. Oh my God, I can't believe I look like that. Or, or didn't someone teach that girl how to pluck her eyebrows or, you know, <laughs> something like that. But um, some of the outfits, but you know, it was the late 80s, what can I say? Yeah, yeah, you're not responsible for <laughs> but, the trends of the right, day. But it was, um, I mean, it was a long time and I, I consider, you know, I graduated from high school Chaminade, which was a school out in um, West Hills in California, but I also have kind of like a, a little degree from the Warner Brothers High School, which is not really a real high school, right. but it's what, you know, everybody at Growing Pains gave me, because really I went to the high school of Warner Brothers, is right. what it feels like, you know. <laughs> the Growing Pains High School. Yeah, Growing school. Pains High School. Wow. It was... So it's definitely, it's definitely different, and it's definitely um, a trade-off to, to work, to grow up on a set and to to have that kind of, an, of a lifestyle rather than yeah. the kind of lifestyle that my sister has now who she's just going off to college right now and she's had the total high school experience, you know, right. it, it just like so popular, prom, graduation, going to college, everything. Normal. She is totally what you would say, like normal, mm, yeah. exactly. And she's just loving it. And so it's really neat to see her do that, yeah. you know. 
But for me, it was good because I wasn't really that as um, academically, well, she's, um, not ac socially inclined as Brandy is, you know? Right. My sister's much better at like just going and having everybody like be her friend. And I had trouble in school, so a set was a good outlet for me. Right, but then it had its price as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, I think when you, when you look at, so I, you can never look towards like just the industry, the set or something and say, that's to blame for my problems. And I think that I'd be foolish or anyone else would be foolish to say that, right. and I don't. Um, it's just possibly, you know, I was put into more extreme circumstances. Right. So having the um, kind of predispositioned personality that I have, which is a very kind of like sensitive and, and like a little bit insecure and a bit like, you know, um, really wanting to like, yeah, perfectionist and please people and everything, that to be on, you know, a, a set, to be on a show where you're just like totally like, you know. Spotlight. Yeah. That, you know, that can be a little it's bit, tough. a little bit difficult, but there's also great rewards to it. And who's to say if I wasn't in high school and um, a cheerleader, that I wouldn't have had the same kind of problems, right. you know? And I think I would have. I think that it, it's very, it, that it, it's, it's within my personality or something that I, that, that my makeup, I don't yeah. know. That's great. That's great that you take responsibility for oh, it. Oh, totally. Like that. Because, I mean, you can't, you can't blame an industry or you can't blame your career or, or look back and say, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. Because ultimately it was me and it was the kind of person I am because there are right. tons of actresses, tons of kids who grew up in the business and, and not all of them go through this same exact problems or have this, had the same problems as me. Right. And there's something specifically to me that made me susceptible to this. But that is a really hard transition anyway, I think, being on a TV show like that for so long. And a lot of actors, especially young actors, I think, mm -hmm. have kind of a, a, a drought after a show like that, you know. Do, um, do you think that that's true? Well, I think that, well, when I got sick, it, was, it, it wasn't even like after the show went down. It was... I got sick while we were doing the show. Right. So while I was still on the show and, and doing that daily, day in and day out and having the, you know, the, the, the everything that, you, you know, you want, that's when I got sick. It wasn't, it was the last season of Growing Pains that, you know, that I had to go into the hospital. Right. And um, then Growing Pains got canceled. And I was really ready for it to, to be over. Yeah. Because seven years is a long time. And it was wonderful while it lasted. But I was getting, you know, antsy to do something else and to do different things and to kind of explore other parts of myself and everything. And um, then what I did was is I took a year off just to totally get myself better and to heal myself and everything. Yeah. And after that year, went back into the business. And which for me was probably the best thing because it gave me kind of like a little bit of a, um, a break from going off of Growing Pains, the finale, that whole hoopla, to kind of emerging with like just tra as Tracy, you right. know, rather than, the neatest thing is when people come up to me and they say, oh, you know, are you Tracy Gold? Or are you, you know, we saw you on this movie or we love you. And it's not, are you Tracy Gold from Growing Pains? Or are you Carol right. Seaver? Are you Mike Seaver's sister? You know, it's like not that. It's really neat because you feel like they're, rec they're recognizing you for you yourself. Right. And for the, the individual accomplishments that I, you know, I've made. It's not just because I'm, you know, happen to be really lucky to be on a good show. Right. And so it's neat. It's a neat kind of experience. How did you actually get get through all that? Do you do you? I know you owe a lot to Robbie. I know you really. Yeah, I mean, it's it was, it it was personal a, support. Did you? It's a really oh, long God. struggle and a really long battle, and it's you know, I mean, something that will be a part of my life, and so something it stays that with I you. yeah, something that I always have to deal with, and that to this day I have issues that I deal with, but um, it's basically finding um, a good doctor and admitting that you have a problem yeah. and going about finding like what's wrong with you on the inside. What's wrong, like what's making you feel so broken down inside, you know, that you're feeling the need to do this. And if you can fix that part of yourself, then the food part will come naturally. Right, yeah. wow. <laughs> That's what I think. 
I think that's I think that's really great. And you and you've been doing so well the last what you've been back working now for like a year and a half, two years. Yeah, let's see. Uh, what is ninety five? Yeah, two years. Two years. Two years. And would you say for the love of Nancy, kind of kind of broke yeah, you out definitely. again? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I got an offer to do a um, a movie with Angelian, and that was my first thing back, and I did that. It was kind of a um, a, a nice, you know, kind of like role, not not the total lead in this TV movie of the week, and and I did, it, and it was like the first thing I did going back after being sick, and it was um. It was it was a scary experience, and then when I was done, I felt pretty ready to go back. Right. And then, for the love of Nancy, happened, and that's when everything really changed. Yeah. yeah. Because before that, I was you know hitting against some walls and areas that now are are coming to me, which is really nice. That's great. So you look back and go, if I ever thought a year ago I'd be in this place, you know. Right. Because now you're getting offers and you're well, busy. for for certain things, right. sure. For certain things, you know, I they come in and they say, you know, would you do this? Uh, do you want to do this? And that's great. That's like the <laughs> biggest, you know, that's awesome. And and there's, but you know, you always strive for the next step. Of course. And that's that's the, that's one of the things about like this business, I think, or any business that you're always wanting to do, like you know, the next thing. So I'm really happy with where I am now. But it's always like, okay, what do I do? Looking next? ahead. What's the what's the next mm -hmm. challenge? The mm -hmm. next step up. Exactly. Right. Well, that's great. So what's the latest? Well, I want to talk to you about this traveling because you're always going to Canada. Yeah, <laughs> I actually think I'm going back to Canada again. Yes. Oh man. So yeah, how's that? Do you like going up there? I do like going up there. It's not by choice, but I like <laughs> it. I go where they tell me to go. Yeah. And it's wherever. There's just a lot of production going on up there, and yep. um, I have a um, another film that I'm starting in October, right. and that'll be. They're talking Vancouver. Great. So, I don't know, <laughs> but it's a really nice city, so I'd, I'd really love to go there. I feel really, like, um, at home there or something. It's just really, I love Vancouver. I went and shot in, in Chico, um, California, which, you know, it's very nice, but very, very, very small, incredibly hot. I mean, you know, 110 degrees we were yeah. shooting in. And I was, and the month before I'd been working in Vancouver, and I was like, God, that was like a vacation. <laughs> I'm like, I'm staying at the Intercontinental Hotel, you know. It was, like, it was just, it was, it was so much fun. I love Vancouver. I just go and I'm like working, and then like, oh, if I get off early enough, I'll go shopping. <laughs> and I said, I, I swear, I see more stars in Vancouver than I do in L.A. It's Because everyone's Hollywood. in one neighborhood. That's right. And it's very cool. Robson Street, coolest. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So now tell me, what's the next thing that'll be arriving on our screens? September 25th, um, I have uh, uh, Beauty's Revenge, which is a movie for NBC. Mm -hmm. That'll be coming out. And it's, You're it's starring being, in that one? No. Well, I'm... Supporting. I'm like a supporting player, but I've, I've heard it advertised on TV, and they've... Um, they're like starring Tracy Gold. They're plugging Golden. Tracy Gold. Yeah. Every, so it, well, that was cool. And... Um, so that's a really good movie, and that'll be on September 25th, and um, I get killed in it. So that'll be interesting. And um, did you do your own stunts? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Did all my own dying stunts, <laughs> and which is really hard because you know I've never died before. Oh. So I don't know how to do it. You know. So when it came about, about for me to have to do it, I was like, you know. How does one know how to die? Do my best here, but you know, <laughs> never really had the experience, guys. <laughs> That's when you really your acting comes into play. Right. You no, know, no. When I die, the second before. No, but um, and then I had um, I did, um, stolen innocence in Chico, and that was the one that was. So was people were like dropping like flies from heat exhaustion, sent to the hospital. Oh, really? I stayed tough. That's right. Yep, and um, that'll be on October third, and that's um with Thomas Calabro. Mm -hmm. And that from I Melrose have a, Place. Yeah, from Melrose Place, and right. I have a starring role in that. Cool. And I should also mention that um, Beauty's Revenge, the one I just did, the one that um, it's going to air September 25th, was shot in Vancouver. That was the recent one. That was one the you one, were one up that was in shot in July. Vancouver, cool. and it was shot in a um, a real small t town called Cloverfield. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't and, even know and, where no, that they is. No, they don't. They they. I said, do you ever go into Vancouver? And this is about an hour out, and they're like. Oh, we've been once, you know. <laughs> no, I was like, oh. So tell me, what's the future for Tracy? I don't know. What do you I, want to do? You want features? Yeah. I mean, I'd love to do whatever comes my way and whatever role is good. I, I look like towards the role, right. and if it happens to be in a great series, 
and it comes my way, that'd be great. If it happens to be in a feature, I'd, I'd love that. I mean, that's, I think that's everybody's dream, or it's my dream. I mean, I want to be on the big screen for sure. Yeah. And so, you know, until you do that, that's just where you look and you go, oh, God, I want to be a big face on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, and then... Well, the, the great thing about the business now is that you can do a feature and you can go back and you can do television and, and they're both just as respected and they're both just as, you know, um, creative outlets. You know, they're, they're great. That's cool. So. Well, awesome. I think that you will do whatever you want to do. Thank you. So, that's it. Okay, terrific. All done. Thank you. It's going uh, seven days a week, two times a week in prime time, and then five times a week in like you know so the middle of the night. I might see it. Yeah, you probably will. It's when are we going to be there? Like, I think October second. I'm going to be in October. Oh, well, then you'll you'll, you'll see definitely it. see it. Cool. We don't know where this segment will be though, like which episode. I'll, I'll have one segment in each. So who else are you interviewing? Oh God, who have we got? Oh, we've got Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, the yeah, uh, the see. Playboy running team. Mm. They're like this new. Thing and um, uh, who, while well, we're doing my brother, of course, and Christine, and uh, who else have we got, Badri? I'm just looking here. <laughs> oh, Jane Leeds from Fraser. From Fraser, right. right. And uh, oh, the president of Elite Models tomorrow we're interviewing. That's cool. Yeah, Nev Campbell from Party of Five. Yeah. So, oh, George, George and Alana, Hamilton. you know George Hamilton? Yeah. From the Commish? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I knew she is. Yeah, so. Cool. So this is all in a week? All in a week. Putting it all in the can and then they'll they'll just, you know, spread it out over over the, the season and they're already talking about season three, so cool. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, huh? I did. Yeah, okay. Chopped it. Well you know how it was kind of too tough. Couch. Is that a No, actually I, I moved the couch. You did? Robbie and I moved the couch. Um You're wiry under all that then. Yeah. You got all this hidden strength. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's so cool. wow, now you can move all that. But it looks great. That carpet it's darker. The last yeah. one was kind of oh yeah. Darker too. Did that on purpose. Oh, Roxanne. oh my god. Get into the picture. Noodles, get into the picture. Don't you want to be a star? <gasps> you know the routine, don't you, Eloise? <laughs> don't you? Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, oh no. Roxanne. She's getting heavy. She's grown. She's grown, yep. She's gonna get, be bigger. Okay, this is the Robbie and I. There you go. Pretty girl. Okay, Badger, we got that one. There we go. Tilt it up, uh, Badger. No, the other way. There we go. Nope, too much, too much. That was such a great day. It was. <laughs> Every time I see those shots, it just takes me right back to it. It's so yeah. awesome. I get that smile again. Yeah. My face starts to hurt. Because I'm just so happy. Yeah. What happens? Nothing like a shiny jux. So I'm between agents right now. I need to leave my agent because they sent me for like two basically soft. I told you. Yeah. Right. You told me that. I know. And, and then and then they submitted me to be Brandon Walsh's love interest. Brandon to one of the Hello. And then, and then Jason, you know, the county told me Jason for me. Then I called him up and I said, Look, I just want you to know I found you know, I heard about this and I find it quite embarrassing and I just, you know, really want you guys to watch it, especially at that office of all places. And, it's, and they didn't really apologize to me, but they kind of like made excuses. And then they called up the casting agent, Diane Young, and I don't do my own game for shit. As if it was her fault. Shit. So I was just like, forget it. 
Is you you're looking at somebody else? She's, she's, yeah. She doesn't have time. I mean, Alyssa keeps her so busy, and she makes so much money from Alyssa that yeah. you know, she doesn't really need to hustle And it's also you don't want, you know, I don't think you want a, a manager who has her daughter, you know. Exactly. So. And I just don't need it. I mean, at this stage of my career. Not at all. No. Case, Nage, it just best. You don't case, need to go giving your money to anyone else. else in the, um, How does my makeup look, everyone? Looks good. <laughs> I wear a lot of makeup, like I know. Well, you can tell if I have like lipstick. Okay, Justine. You barely know that. So. Anytime you're ready. You gonna move to me and then I talk, or? Uh, you you start talking and I'll move to you. Okay. Anytime. Starting at age 15, as one of hottest blah blah. Yeah. As one of prime times. Starting at age 15 as one of Prime Time's hottest stars in sitcoms, that's not right, sorry. Starting at age 15 in one of Prime Time's hottest sitcoms. Okay. Yes. No problem. Starting at age 15 in one of Prime Time's hottest sitcoms, Tracy Gold, now a married and grown woman, talks to Metro Cafe about her career, her future, and some of her own growing pains. Ended it up anyway. Okay, we are rolling. Starting at age 15 in one of Primetime's hottest sitcoms, Tracy Gold, now a married and grown woman, talks to Metro Cafe about some of her... something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Starting at age 15 in one of Primetime's hottest sitcoms, Tracy Gold, now a married, grown woman, talks to Metro Cafe about her career, her future, and some of her own growing pains. Starting at age 15 in one of Prime Time's hottest sitcoms, Tracy Gold, who's now a married and grown woman, talks to Metro Cafe about her career, her future, and some of her own growing pains. Here. Okay. You okay? And we're rolling. Starting at age 15 in one of Prime Time's hottest sitcoms, Tracy Gold, who's now a grown married woman and a mature dramatic actress, talks to Metro Cafe about her career, her future, and some of her own growing pains. Okay, here we go. Starting at age 15, in one of Primetime's hottest sitcoms, Tracy Gold, who's now a married and grown woman and a dramatic actress, talks to Metro Cafe about some of her own growing pains. Nope, that wasn't quite right. <laughs> that was a good one, but I was just doing another one. No, <laughs> no it wasn't really. Just the end. I kind of went goofy at the end there. Well, you know, it's good to have true. Instead of just saying, hi, we're here. Like, How do you want me to say growing pains? There we go. That's enough, Kishoho. Except for the car. Yeah. Plain, plain. Her own growing pains. <sighs> Starting at age 15 in one of Primetime's hottest sitcoms, Tracy Gold, who's now a mature woman and married and I don't know what all else. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Right. Now a grown married woman and a mature, dramatic... I don't think I want to say mature. Anytime. Starting at age 15 in one of Primetime's hottest sitcoms, Tracy Gold, who's now a grown married woman and a dramatic actress, talks to Metro Cafe about her career, her future, and some of her own growing pains. <laughs> 